In this update, we've got training supercell thunderstorms causing major flooding over the next couple of days as the intense heat really starts to build, deepening the drought and causing numerous wildfires. Plus, we'll update you on the tropics. Welcome back, everyone. Pal Ponder on Weather here with an update. I know it's been a while. It's been 15 days I've been out with my family into the Pacific Northwest experience our longest vacation ever. <laughs> so we actually, you know, flew into Seattle, we rented a car and we drove all over the Pacific Northwest covering pretty much all the Washington and Oregon beautiful area up there. Experienced the really nice conditions. I couldn't have timed it any perfect. We had 50 to 60 degree temperatures almost every single day hardly in a cloud in the sky for the pacific northwest they've been in a kind of a drier pattern right now but we got a lot to take delve into and i'm back with an update so let's take a look at the overall setup on the satellite picture and let's take a look at the uh, we got a stalled cold front across the midsection of the country that's bringing all the the training supercell thunderstorms the last couple of days and that's actually going to continue for the next several days as we've got dominant high pressure to the south in Oklahoma and Texas, and that doesn't seem to go anywhere. And then the monsoonal flow is going to be alive and prevalent for the desert southwest, where they've been getting numerous flash flooding uh, taking place over the last couple of days, and that actually is going to be expecting to continue. So let's look at some of these rainfall totals, and they have been pretty impressive over the last 72 hours. And you can follow the graph on the top right-hand corner of the screen. And we, out, we had a one in thousand year event the other night and close to St. Louis there with, you know, record all time, all time, their, you know, the highest rainfall they've seen ever in a, in a short amount of time causing numerous extreme flash flooding out there as the monsoonal flow has been really alive out here in the desert southwest. So I think you've actually might even seen your peak temperatures in places into Phoenix this season because I think this monsoonal flow will continue to remain active for the rest of the season but now we have this setup of this this band, this band we, we have this uh, you know high pressure to the south we've been causing this kind of overrunning conditions cold fronts only make it so far south in the summertime and this one's basically crawling so it's almost like a convective conveyor belt of training supercell thunderstorms right along this boundary and i think that's actually going to continue in fact uh the weather prediction center has an excessive uh rainfall outlook out for today uh, right along that boundary so all the rain that you've seen in kentucky you're going to be adding to those totals and in fact a moderate risk for a flash flooding that typically falls in line with about four to six inches of rainfall as the desert southwest will be alive and prevalent with the monsoonal flow out there they can only handle about a half inch of rainfall in an hour time frame and they've been seeing that and more in some of those areas and that's why they're causing some of that kind of that, that major flash flooding out there but this is going to be the setup over the next couple of days this is for today, and then as we get into tomorrow, I think it's gonna be alive as well, but here's the setups for the high pressure. Of course, we've got that dominating ridge of high pressure that's been baking Oklahoma and Texas, parts of Arkansas, parts of Louisiana. We've got flash flood watches where the monsoonal flow is prevalent in Arizona and New Mexico, and of course, we've got those flash flood watches up here in the portions of Kentucky where they do have that moderate to slight risk for excessive rainfall. And then now the heat really starts to build in the Pacific Northwest. You spent those glorious two weeks, but now the ridge of high pressure is gonna be dominating that region. Portland saw over 100 degrees yesterday. I know Seattle topped out at, at a record high temperature. That heat continues uh, gonna be inundating that area for the next couple of days with those heat advisories and those excessive heat warnings are going to be taking place over the next couple of days but here's the overall bigger picture where the high pressure is we've got a lot of sinking air that's why we've got that excessive heat advisories and excessive heat warnings so you can definitely see where the high pressure is in this map where the low pressures are and where the monsoonal flow is that's where they got all the heavy rainfall and excessive flooding taking place in, in portions of Arizona and to New Mexico. And then, of course, right along this boundary here with this kind of stalled cold front, that's indicative of this, you know, where it transfers to, say, blue and red here. That's always an indication where this front is just slowly drifting south 
It'll move a little bit further south, but it ain't going to be moving much. And that's going to be causing that excessive rainfall that we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of days. So we have a moderate risk in places and portions of Kentucky today. And that actually continues tomorrow because that cold front really doesn't go anywhere. So the same type of weather you're seeing today, you're actually going to see tomorrow. So this is compounding on all the rain you've actually seen already. So that's why some of the roads have already washed out in this area. So this is a dangerous setup with this uh, with this extreme flooding that we're gonna be dealing with over the next uh, couple of days. And it doesn't end there because that cold front only sags so far south. So it pushes, it tries to push into Oklahoma. It does reach portions of Northern Oklahoma. And I do feel like say Oklahoma City will be experiencing some, you know, upper eighties type of weather. And then some of those, you know, marginal risk for excessive rainfall, but the majority of the heavier rain will be further to the north going into Arkansas, going into especially into Tennessee, back into Kentucky again. And then there's another bullseye. I think even Denver, even yesterday had a lot of heavier rains. Those areas will be inundated as well. And poor Texas, <laughs> you're still going to be sitting high and dry as that ridge of high pressure will be dominating. So here's the next three days of rainfall. And this is convective supercell thunderstorms. So not, it's not a widespread event. But if you're under those training cells, you got, you got uh, precipitation water content values of two to three inches per hour. And those can produce flash flooding, just like the other night, areas in St. Louis only had, say, a trace of rain, but other areas picked up a foot of rain. And that's the type of setup we're under with these training supercell thunderstorms. If you're underneath one, it can send out copious amounts of rain because the upper level winds just don't move very, very much that fast. And that allows the atmosphere to kind of churn itself and keep raining over the same areas over and over and over again, causing that extreme flooding. Why other areas I'm like, hey, where's the rain? I'm not getting anything, even though you're like 50 miles to the south or 50 miles to the north. That's the type of setup we're in with this particular system going forward over the next three days. But beyond that, as we get into the weekend going into Sunday, like I mentioned, that cold front really doesn't move that further south. I do feel it makes it into Oklahoma. You'll get a little bit of a respite from the, the heat for you, for you guys. But you can see where the below average temperature anomalies will be is where all the cloud cover and the rain will be for the monsoonal flow and right along this boundary where the uh, where the cold front will stall in these areas. And there's that ridge of high pressure that's going to be dominating for the Pacific Northwest for a couple of days. It's not an extended heat uh, by any stretch of the imagination, because I think by the time we get into Monday, We've got a trough that comes in off the Pacific Northwest, bringing a little bit cooler conditions for them as this uh, trough will be extending into, into portions and ending the heat wave. So I think a lot of the, you know, the excessive heat warnings and a lot of the heat advisories will be ending up in that area, but that won't be until Monday. So you've got until then to deal with all that, all that heat and sometimes record heat in those areas. While the ridge of high pressure really starts to starts to build over the midsection of the country, especially as we get towards the middle of the week. But here's the particular setup as we go towards end your Monday going into Tuesday. Nothing really much changes. I mean, besides where we got the Pacific has been pretty active out here. They've been producing storms after storms after storms and actually helping with this monsoonal flow. And I think that's actually going to continue for them. So like I mentioned, you know, all the all the heat that you've seen previously in the summertime for places like in the Phoenix, I think you might actually even see in your peak summer with a, with this monsoonal flow continuing to be prevalent for for them. So I think a lot more rain is going to be on the table for the rest of the summer, especially for the desert southwest. And there's that cold front will stall and actually lift further north <laughs> as we go into Monday time frame. But yeah, as we go into your Wednesday, going towards the middle of next week, there's the ridge of high pressure. We'll start to dominating over the midsection of the country. So places further to the north will start impacting with those well above average temperature anomalies, going to be impacting portions 
of say the Dakotas, getting into Iowa, get into Minnesota, especially like into Wisconsin. I mean, look at these temperature anomalies of 15 upwards to almost 20 degrees above average in the heart of summer. So this is typically your you know hottest time of the year that you've seen your warmest temperatures in those areas you're going to be experiencing well above average temperatures for the summertime standards as much of the south is still going to be hot but it's not going to be like deepening hot with you know five degrees above average say your doubt you know your high is, average high is 97 in dallas fort worth even five degrees above average is about 102 for them but you can definitely see the prevalence of that trough bringing those cooler anomalies back into the picture but that won't be until a week from now as we move forward into next week but out in the tropics ain't nothing going on guys we're we're in a we're in a la nina we're ex actually expecting a very active season but right now there ain't nothing cooking we've got three storms so far this season but hey it's only july the end of the july so you know we're always watching these areas but the main culprit has really been this saharan dust that's been really prevalent coming off of africa it's been squashing really any activity that's been trying to get any sort of or circulation out there and i think that actually continues not just for the next five days but even going for the first part of august i do think a lot of that african dust is just going to be squashing the pattern if we look at the upward rising motion the vertical vertical velocity index eh, it's not much happening there either i mean it's got it's not much upward rising motion error so we're a little kind of a lull from the tropics so those areas that are you know wanting to some sort of respite in the drought and any help from the tropics that ain't gonna happen anytime soon because at least for the next five to ten days there's not much happening and if we take a look at the overall satellite picture as we move forward even the next week look at all that orange that's all that dry air right that's deepening dry air complements really of the saharan dust will try to rip anything apart out there so there's not really much happening to the Atlantic, the main development region, back into the Caribbean. And even if we look at some of the ensemble guidance moving forward on the European guidance for the next 10 days, look, ain't nothing. <laughs> not much to speak of on the tropical front, ideally. But going forward, here's overall summary for the next seven days with those temperature anomalies gonna be dominating pretty much Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, going into Georgia, really kind of along the East Coast here, where the, where, the, where the clouds and the rain is gonna be with the monsoonal flow and that stalling cold front, that's where you're gonna be experiencing those cooler than average anomalies. But then where that high pressure is gonna be dominating for much of the week, at least for the next five to seven days for the Pacific Northwest, I do feel as we get into early next week, especially by Wednesday, you'll be a drastic change. So that's not, you know, the heat wave will be prevalent up there, but it's not going to be in an extended heat wave uh, like areas further to the south. So, but here's the bullseye, guys. I mean, <laughs> this almost like, I mean, Texas is pretty much closed for any rainfall going forward. I mean, they're in a desperate deepening drought the high, the the worst drought they've seen there in that area for the, since 2011 and things don't look to get any better anytime soon as the ridge of high pressure is really going to be dominating and of course then you're going into august your hottest time of the year so you got deepening concerns for a lot of fires out there in texas as the drought will really start to intensify especially as we get into your august with not much really to change in this overall pattern. And, but here's the setup for as far as the rain amounts will go we'll, we, with that monsoonal flow and where that stalled cold front will be bringing copious amounts of rain. So yeah, those areas with that convective banding of thunderstorms easily probably six to 10 inches of rain over the next couple of days in some of those isolated spots is definitely not out of the question. But that, that extreme flooding, major flooding is going to be alive with this as long as that cold front begins to kind of shift back and forth over the next uh, couple of days. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. I'm, I'm great to be back. I, I appreciate you tuning in. I know it's been a while, but I'll be doing daily updates again like I normally have. So I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned to the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.